to Eshe Music TV, where we provide tips, tools, techniques, and resources to help you grow your music ministry. Today, we're going to talk about income streams that you may not have thought of, something, some things that are non-traditional, especially in the gospel music industry. But before we get to that, we're going to uh, hear, today we're, we've got dance music for you. So we're going to hear a song, Dance with Heaven, by Written to the Heavens. And then we'll be right back. I was stranded on a broken path. I was branded by a bitter past. But you say that you will hold my hand. And you say that you know the plans that you have for me. You have for me. I can't feel that you are with me Starting to believe that you are near Lifting my hands to feel your presence Moving my feet to dance with heaven Welcome back to Eshe Music TV. Today we're going to talk to Bree Noble about income streams, some non-traditional income streams that you may not have thought of. Now, for those of you who don't know who Bree Noble is, she is or was a Christian music artist from California. She is not really performing much anymore. She focuses more on helping other artists with their music businesses. She runs a podcast called, she runs two podcasts actually, one called Women of Substance Radio and the other called Female Entrepreneur Musician Podcast. They are both great podcasts and even though she works with, personally she, in her membership she only works with women, she also, all of the information that she provides is helpful to men as well in the music industry. So without further ado, here is my interview, the first part of my interview with, uh, with Brie Noble. 
Welcome, Bree, to Eshe Music TV. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on. I wanted to bring you on to talk about uh, income streams for Christian artists. So, but before we get into that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, so I am a, a music business and productivity coach, and I help musicians learn to make money from their music, whether they're like full time or they're part time and want to be full time or, you know, maybe you're just a hobbyist, but you want to be able to finance all your music passion projects. I don't want you to have to dip into your bank account. So I love to help musicians learn how to make money from music, how to be more productive, get a lot more done, not to feel overwhelmed by all the things that they need to do as musicians and people that own a business. And bottom line, to understand that as a musician, you are an entrepreneur. So you do need to learn how to run yourself as a business. Fantastic. I know recently you did a, an online summit called the Profitable Musician Summit, where you talked about 39 different income streams for artists. Yeah, it was crazy. So um, my goal with it was to find as many income streams that I could come up with, um, many of which I think musicians hadn't thought of, to try to just provide ways that musicians can make money from music that they, they hadn't thought of, they hadn't tried, or giving them lots of tactics on how to do better in the ones that they're working in right now. Um, because I want, I want musicians to be able to really pursue their passion and not to be stressed out about money and not to have to, to get stuck in that starving artist mindset, but really feel like they could eventually do this as a living if that's what they want to do. That's fantastic. I always like to say, you know, uh, being a starving artist may be romantic, but it's not practical. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. So, um, so I wanted you to maybe go through some of these, some of the ones that aren't as obvious. I went through the, the summit and I picked out some that I thought uh, maybe we could talk about. Sure. Like, um, like the keynote concert. Yeah, I love keynote concerts. I actually, so that um, was talked about by my friend Tiamo, and he does keynote concerts for a lot of corporate events and um, like fundraisers and things, nonprofits, big companies. But I actually like to think of it more like a signature concert, especially for Christian artists, because it's a signature because it, it kind of weaves in your story or your signature style, your signature uh, life experience and testimony in with your music. And that is really where I hit my stride as an artist when I was a touring artist is that I had a signature concert like that. And um, people really identified with my story and then in turn identified with my songs and that made them want to buy my music. And then, you know, it, it was just kind of this packaged program that helped me actually promote it because it was instead of like, oh, I would love to come sing and perform at your church or your event. It was, here's this program that you can present to your audience. And it just makes it so much easier to talk about instead of talking about yourself and trying to sell yourself as an artist, you're selling this program and this experience. Okay. What about uh, house concerts? House concerts are almost like an extension of that, what I was just talking about, the keynote concert, except it's a smaller experience. You're in someone's home. You are, um, you don't have to stress out about your sound system. You could even just be you and your guitar or you and your keyboard. You might not even need to have mics or anything, but it allows you to have such a close, almost a back and forth conversation with your audience when they're right in front of you in someone's living room and you're able to get feedback from them. You're able to talk to them before and after and really get to know them as your fans and you know become friends with them. And it's just really great for actually making money as an artist because when people are that close to you and you give them this special experience, they're gonna wanna give. And I always you know, take donations at house concerts and allow people to give you know, the way that they're led to give and Sometimes, you know, that can be from like $20 to $100 sometimes from an individual person just because they were so moved by what you had to say and, and what you had in your music. 
you can really bond with your audience in a, mm -hmm. in a house concert. Yes. I like that idea. Uh, so, okay. What about concert window? What's that? So concert window is a way to do concerts completely online. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, many of you are, I'm sure are familiar with Facebook Live and it's a little bit different from that in that it's on a separate platform and you can invite people to it. They can actually pay to attend. So you could have, you know, ticket prices for people to go. Um, you can have like, you could do a free concert, but then like take donations during the concert. Um, and it's just, it's an environment where people are coming to a concert. They're not distracted by all the things on Facebook. Um, and I know many artists, especially, um, in fact, we had Jennifer Knapp, which some of you guys may be familiar with, uh, Christian artists from the late 90s, early 2000s. She's still performing and she does a monthly concert window. And so she talked on the summit about how she uses that as part of her base income as an artist to make sure that she, you know, is able to pay her bills every month and stuff, just because she's got this concert window. Uh, it's almost like a residency online in a way. Okay. That's interesting. And uh, let's see, songwriting. I know this one is pretty, I, that's, it's normal, right? It's something that, it's probably one of the first things that artists think about. Um, the thing, I, the reason I, I put this on here is because I hear, I hear songs from artists where the song is really good, um, and the, and but they want to sing it. And sometimes that <laughs> sometimes when you're listening to it and you're realizing this is a great song, but the person who's singing it probably shouldn't be the one to sing it because you know for whatever reason the their vocals just kind of take away from from the song. Whereas to be a songwriter to write your story, to write your testimony, um, and then have it out there for others to sing might take the song further. Isn't this a wonderful interview so far? I have been looking forward to talking with Bree Noble for a long time. And so it was, it was a big treat to get to uh, talk to her. Now, I did ask a question at the end of that first part. And we will get back to that after this song by Simply Candace called So Amazing. And we'll get back to the second part of the interview. Lord, I pray to you, please hear my cry. I come to you again, Lord, my El Shaddai. In my pain, I know you'll answer because you are so amazing. You're my everything. You're my everything. Whenever I'm lost, you make a way. Lord, you make a way. I'm praising your name each and every day. I'm praising your name. Jesus, you are so amazing. amazing. So amazing. Understood. He will answer you and answer your call. For those who abide in him are not alone. You're my everything. You're my everything. Whenever I'm lost, you make a way. Lord, you always make a way. I'm praising your name each and every day. I'm praising your name. Jesus, you are amazing, so amazing. Prayer. When you have a problem, he'll always be there. Always there. He will move in your life, and you will see. You'll see. The results are in. He will not leave. You're my everything. You're my everything. Whenever I'm lost, you make a way. You make a way. I'm praising your name each and every day. I'm praising your name. Jesus, you are amazing. So. Jesus in heart and in mind. 
control. Push through because victory is won. I praise him. Are you looking for support and help with your music career? My name is Bree Noble, and I want to invite you to join us in the Female Indie Musician Community. It's a free group on Facebook where we provide networking, resources, and support for female indie artists in all genres. So join us over at WOScommunity.com. That's WOScommunity.com to join the group or look for Female Indie Musician Community on Facebook. See you inside. Henry, thank you for joining me. So we're gonna get back to the second part of the interview with Brie Noble. She's gonna answer my question about songwriting. So back to part two of my interview with Brie Noble. And uh, let's see, songwriting. I know this one is pretty, I, that's, it's normal, right? It's something that, it's probably one of the first things that artists think about. Um, the thing, I, the reason I, I put this on here is because I hear, I hear songs from artists where the song is really good, um, and, and, but they wanna sing it. And sometimes that <laughs> sometimes when you're listening to it and you're realizing this is a great song, but the person who's singing it probably shouldn't be the one to sing it because, you know, for whatever reason, the, their vocals just kind of take away from, from the song. Whereas to be a songwriter, to write your story, to write your testimony, um, and then have it out there for others to sing might take the song further. So um, as far as getting your song sung by other artists, that's a really difficult thing to do. You really have to have connections to get your songs in front of other artists. And you probably need to get a song pitcher or song plugger or something to do that. But what is a little more accessible, I think, to Christian artists is to get into to, uh, music licensing. And that's where you can get your songs into film and TV. And the reason I think, like there's not a lot of specific licensing opportunities for Christian music, but I do think that there are a lot of opportunities for positive focused music, um, you know, message music, that kind of thing in for licensing, especially maybe like ads, you know, the places where they wanna have just like a fun, positive, uplifting message. And that's something that, you know, we're pretty good at writing as Christian artists. And so I think that's, an open door to look into for some kind of uh, passive income. It does take a while to build up your contacts and your, you know, your income streams in music licensing, but it is something that can be done. I know many people who are doing it. Okay. All right. So what about, oh, we spoke before about corporate gigs. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that kind of goes, that goes hand in hand with keynote concerts, right? Yeah, I think it is. Like I did do some corporate gigs and especially some uh, gigs for nonprofits, you know, their big events and things that was my signature concert. And that just works really well for those kinds of events because they're looking for something inspirational. Okay. So 
what are air gigs? So air gigs is a place where you can get uh, gigs perform or basically doing demos for people online, whether it's backups or whether it's recording a vocal for somebody that's already written a song. Um, the, you can do, I'm sure they have other ones for, you know, instrumentalists and stuff, but of course I'm a vocalist. So I've gotten gigs on air gigs doing demos for people. And many artists I've worked with have done that as well. And it's just a great way to make, you know, side income from home. If you have a home studio, which nowadays is so cheap to set up a really good sounding home studio and, you know, that kind of can make up your income base because I always love to talk about the streams of income that kind of make up all these pieces of a pie mm -hmm. and when I was a touring artist that was one of the pieces of my pie was recording demos for songwriters and other people you know from home oh so you mean I can do some background vocals without ever meeting the artist face to face that's right <laughs> absolutely you can awesome okay and what about busking and online busking um, so busking obviously is just, you know, street performing. And I think nowadays, like street performing has become a little bit more high profile and you can, you can really hear some fantastic artists out on the street and they can actually make some really good income. But there's a way you can do busking online, believe it or not. It's called Street Jelly. And um, I had the, the owner of Street Jelly come and talk on our summit and talk about how artists use it. And basically people buy tokens and they go and like they hang out and watch you perform for a while and then they pay you in tokens and then you can cash those out into your PayPal account. So That's it's just cool. a really fun way to like get practice, meet potential fans. The artist that I had on that talked about Street Jelly has made a lot of fans and friends through Street Jelly that then came and followed her on Facebook and got on her email list and stuff. So it's another great way to meet potential fans. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, okay. So it sounds to me like being a Christian or gospel artist doesn't really limit the income, the income streams that, that you can have. I don't think so. I don't think so. In fact, I think we have more because we have the opportunity to, to approach churches. I mean, churches uniquely have a lot of events, right? And I feel like when I'm talking to a secular artist, there's this whole area that's not opened up to them because they can't really play at women's events at churches, women's retreats. Um, you know, I personally pay, played at tons of mothers of preschoolers groups and women's re retreats and women's holiday events and teas and things like that that are at churches that you can't do if you're not a Christian artist, right? So I feel like we have a lot more options open to us. And yeah, we could play in bars, but we don't really want to. And nowadays, secular artists don't want to either because nobody's listening <laughs> right. to you when you're playing in a bar. It's much better to play at a, at a, you know, at a house concert or a keynote concert. And so I feel like there's more opportunities for Christian artists and just a good reason not to do the things like performing in bars and restaurants that aren't even going to help you as a music career anyway. Right. So stick to the things that are really going to build your fans. You know, you're going to find your fans at churches. There's no reason you shouldn't be performing at churches, but think. So um, the last thing I wanted to ask you was to just tell my viewers, uh, how they can reach out to you and um, get access to, to your service and what you do. Absolutely. So if you um, are interested in learning more about how to run your music as a business, how to be more productive, um, how to conquer things like, you know, uh, confidence issues and um, mindset blocks and things like that of making money from music. You definitely want to check out my podcast, which is the Female Entrepreneur Musician. You can get it on all the different podcast channels as well as at our website, which is femmusician.com. That's F as in female, E as an entrepreneur, musician.com. And there, there's ton of great resources on that site, um, a free 19 sources of income guide for musicians, um, some smart goals uh, workbook to help you really become more productive. And then if you're interested in like a little bit more like 
one-on-one -on -one help from me, then you can join uh, my membership program called the Female Musician Academy, which I, I just absolutely love working with female artists in there. So that's also on that website. So go to femmusician.com and you'll find all the stuff that you need to, to hang out with me and learn more from what I've got to offer. Okay, fantastic. So it sounds like you work, you work only with women in your membership, but the podcast and other resources are open for everybody. Is that right? Absolutely. That's why I said to go to the website because there, there are many men that are on my email list. They're like, is it okay that I'm learning from you? Absolutely. I just want to provide a special platform to women and to help them specifically. Cause I do think that there are certain things that we struggle with as women that men don't, you know, a lot of us are moms. We're trying to juggle our family and our career and things like that. So that's why I provide that. But absolutely, you're all welcome to come learn from my podcasts. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have along the way. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Bray. I really appreciate you, you joining us. <laughs> all righty. Thank you so much, Bree, for sitting down with me and talking about some non-traditional income streams. If you'd like to learn more, or if you want to know what Eshe Music can do for you, please visit my website at eshemusic.com. That's E-C-H-E music.com. And also, I am on the lookout for fresh new music. And if you'd like to be a guest on my show, I am open to interviewing you. If you'd like to promote your book or your new CD project, or anything like that, visit tv.eshemusic.com, and you can submit a request there. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to go out with another dance song, He Walks With Me by Team Elevation. Thanks for watching. See you next time.
with them, have no fear, cause he's with me. Yeah, Jesus with me, he walks with me. Thank you for watching SJA Music TV. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. To receive the free gift mentioned in this episode or to have your song featured, please visit us at tv.shamusic.com.